everyone, it's Jessica, and today I'm going to do a demo and a review of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. Now this retails for $58, which is ridiculous, and it was one of those things that for literally a year I grappled with back and forth, and at one point I bought one single powder of, I want, it wasn't one of these, it was diffused light, and I wasn't impressed, so I returned it, because that one alone was like, I want to say almost $50. So I returned it and I was going to get this like in its place because it was only a little bit more expensive and I didn't. And now I regret that because I could have been looking awesome for a year. So I'm going to get into the demo of how I use this as someone with fair skin because I think that's different than someone that has darker skin. Because the colors, it makes a difference where you would put them on your face. So let's go ahead and get into the demo and afterwards I will go into the details of if I would recommend this and other things like that. Okay, so I've done my makeup for the day and the last thing I haven't done is highlight or finishing powder or whatever. And I've mentioned in a few recent videos that I really don't powder powder my face anymore. I used to use like a mattifying powder right here, but I realized that that's kind of what makes me look more youthful and more awake. And so when I powder that little bit of grease away, for me on my skin, I feel like it ends up looking just dull, especially in the winter when I'm already dry. So I really have not been using setting powders very much, especially in that area. But for the sake of this video, I will show you what I would do because this, these powders don't make me look dry and cakey and dull because that, that literally the idea behind them is that it's adding life and light into your face. So I really only use two colors in this. I use this color here and this color here and if I get it right this should be this must be radiant light and incandescent light. I think I labeled them wrong the other time and then this one I think is dim light. Yeah that seems right. So radiant light is the one I use like I can use all over my face because it's a little bit less shimmery. None of them are crazy shimmery at all. But this one's the least shimmery and it's the most like skin color one for me. So I end up using that one all over my face in a way and I just use any powder brush. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I just kind of dot it onto it because it does kick up a lot of dust and you don't really need a, pun a bunch, a punch. So I will usually just dust that right down the bridge of my nose and then right here on my forehead. And you notice right away, I don't know if you notice, but in person, right away, any, I have like little bits of breakouts and stuff that aren't really showing through, but I can see like the ridges of them. Right away when I put this on, it's as if they disappeared. Like it, 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 it perfects your skin. I don't know how else to describe that. So that was amazing to me. The first time I applied that one, I was like, wow, like it, my skin looks so much more perfected. Then, what I'll typically do is I'll still take that same color and go ahead and put it where I'm going to add highlight as well, but just to add a little bit more perfection, I'll kind of dust that even right over my concealer there and back, and same thing on the other side. So that's all I'll do with that powder. And when I'm not trying to look crazy, um, highlighty and amazing, um, I'll just do that. But most days I will also do the middle color which is that incandescent light and I'll use a smaller brush because I want to be a little more precise. This is the Diva Beauty round contour but you can use anything that's that size. I mean you can use anything. Um, so I'm just going to again just tap it into it because it kicks up a lot and this time I am going to tap off a little excess and I'm just going to focus it not necessarily right above my cheekbone because then it, it gets too high. I'm going to kind of do it right there and a little bit around my blush because I want my blush to kind of glow as well. So I'm just going to kind of swirl it really lightly in that area. I'm going to get a little bit more. I can even take a little bit up above the brow bone there if you wanted. And it just adds a little bit of a sheen. There is some shimmer to it, but it's nothing, you know, it's nothing like the Mary Luminizer where, you know, it's like crazy shimmery, like you can literally use this as an eyeshadow. Nothing like that. It adds the most perfect amount of glow. You really can't screw it up. So let me go ahead and do it to the other side. Same thing in the highlight area above my cheekbone, but also a little bit on the blush just because I used a matte blush today. Um, so just to awaken it a little bit, a um, little bit more. And then what I'll usually go back through just to make sure there's not too much of any one thing anywhere, I'll take that powder brush I'd used with the um, radiant light, is that what that is? 
Um, and I'm just going to kind of brush over it to make sure that there, it's not too highlighty. Just to kind of spread it out over the regions of my face. So, the only one I really am not finding myself using is this one here, just because it is more of an orange tone. I have in the past, and I'll go ahead and show you, you can use like a fan brush or something, or really any brush, um, and I'll just take a little bit of this and I would just sweep it here. Um, but it really doesn't, I'm not, I don't even want to do it because it doesn't really do anything for it. it just adds a little bit of shimmer back to the bronzer or contour that you might have used um, and I, I don't really like the look it gives so this is amazing as a highlight color if you do have darker skin if you don't you can still use it like I could still use it there and it'd be fine um, and I'll swatch it for you guys so you can kind of see it. it's not like it's crazy dark but it is a little more orange tone so I just don't find that I am using it see so for a glowy bronzer for fair skin, it would look nice and that way I'm just not really into that. So other than that, I kind of wish they made a duo of just these two and getting them alone is just, almost just as expensive as buying the palette really. So um, I love this. That is, that's how I've been using it lately. So obviously I love this palette and it's one of those things that I think if I did run out of like one of the shades, instead of getting the palette, I think I would end up buying a single of whichever one I'd run out of because I'm realizing, you know, for me, I travel all the time. Tyler and I both travel. I mean, he has a travel channel, so I mean, we travel a lot. And I would rather not bring a whole palette that's gonna take up a lot of room. I'd rather bring like if I wanted just one of these, just bring one of the powders, which I think if I were to just buy one, I think I would buy the one that I use all over my face, which is the um, Radiant Light, because it makes you look so candlelit, and there is a drugstore dupe, you guys. Now, some people will disagree with me that this is a dupe, but I, in my heart of hearts, feel that it is. Now, this is the Ambient Lighting Powder in, in uh, Radiant Light that I love. This is a Wet n Wild one, and it's the um, bronzer called Reserve Your Cabana. It's not really a bronzer, clearly. And so this is Wet n Wild and this is Ambient Lighting and I've talked about this before, but they end up doing the exact same thing on your skin. Now I will say that I think the there's a little bit of a shade difference. The, ambi the Wet n Wild one is a little more yellow tone and the um, Ambient one is a little more pinkish. However, I think that the overall look on your skin is the same where it just makes you look so flawless and beautiful and um, you just feel like a million bucks. I don't really know how else to describe that. Um, and I notice such a difference between when I use a powder like these and when I don't. And I get compliments like, wow, you look so radiant today, or you look, your skin looks really nice. It really makes a difference. So if you're not wanting to get all three of these, or you really don't want to splurge, because that's a lot of money, I highly, highly recommend the Wet n Wild one. It is $3.99. It is a huge thing of it. It does expire after like a year or two because it's, um, it has SPF in it, added bonus, um, but it really is amazing. Now, back to this, since the video is about this. The packaging on this is, it's pretty, but I hate that you can see your fingerprints on it, but it is, I mean, these powders are smaller than like if you were to buy a full one of one of them, that's way bigger than this. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, there's no, there's no noticeable smell. There is a little bit of a, and I noticed this with the one when I bought it. I guess there is a smell, but it's nothing that's so pungent that it bothers you. You know, no horrible smell or anything like that. The texture of these is really, um, just velvety. The only one that doesn't feel as velvety, although it looks velvety, is the middle one in incandescent light. That's the only one that doesn't feel as smooth as the others, but it goes on just as smooth, if that makes a difference. I noticed that the wear time, it stays put. It doesn't go anywhere, especially if you've used a primer on your face. Now, what I have noticed is that when I use a setting spray on top of it, it really electrifies it. So when I have first applied this in the morning and I apply a setting spray, it's almost too much. But if I were to apply like a setting spray to kind of revive my face halfway through the day, then it looks really nice. But it is a lot when you put them together. So what I would recommend is that if you do put a setting spray on right after applying this, take some sort of um, clean brush and just kind of buff it into the skin, just the setting spray. That way it, it kind of evens it all out a little more so you look a little more flawless because otherwise it, it does electrify it. Um, so 
I bought mine at Sephora, and like I said, it's $58. I have, I always have links for Sephora. Okay, phone, I hear you vibrating over there, geez. I do always have links for Sephora coupons below, so I will put any coupons I can find down below if you're interested. Um, and you can usually get like a free gift with purchase and things like that. Um, and of course, Sephora has their like, you know, if you spend $100, you can get a 100 point perk. So there are little things you can do to help, but um, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So overall, would I recommend it? Obviously, yes, I would. Now, like I said, I always like to provide drugstore options when I can because my channel is, I mean, it's mostly drugstore anyway. So this is what I would recommend if you don't want to spend the money, which I do not blame you. It took me a long time to finally get around to it. So hopefully that review is helpful. If you're interested, I will link all of my other reviews down below as well as my recent high-end haul where I hauled this and a ton of other things. That was so exciting. So if you're interested, check those out. Please subscribe if you would, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Jessica, and today I have a review of the e.l.f. Ultimate Kabuki Brush. Now this is retailing for $10 right now on e.l.f.'s website, and they sent it to me, and I, when I saw it, I was like, I've got to review this. This is hilariously awesome. Because it looks like the Becca brush, I want to say it's called like the One brush or something like that. I don't own it, um, but it's really, really pricey, which is why I don't own it. Um, but this one looks like it's about the same size. This brush is incredibly soft. $10.